Here we are. The Lord has called us to do these Holy Spirit outpouring meetings. And uh, without getting into a lot of things, because this is not the purpose of, 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 of this meeting, I felt that this is a time for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit of God to come upon this world. People in this world have been through a lot, a lot of pain, a lot of suffering, a lot of, a lot of uh, discouragement, a lot of trial. And God is a God of love. God's a God of hope and joy and healing. And I started to feel several days ago that he wants to do an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. When things get very bad, that's when God shows up and does, it, does the outpouring. So I'm here with, uh, with Mary, and we're going to try to do our best to do these meetings daily until God says otherwise at 4 p.m. Pacific time and 7 p.m. Um, um, Eastern time on the East Coast. So, honey, why don't you pray and just bring us here live, and we're going to go and see what the Lord wants to do today. Dear God, I just want to thank you that no matter what is happening here on this earth, no matter what kind of circumstances or darkness people are facing. I thank you, God, that 24 seven, heaven is happening. Yes, God. I thank you, God, that true life and love and joy and hope and warmth and light can be found all the time in you. And I thank you, God, that your heart's desire is for the whole world to experience, experience you, experience heaven, even now here on earth. And Lord, my heart's desire is that we all, the whole body of Christ, will turn to you and just look at you and, and live out of heaven, Lord, so that the world can see and can want what you have to give. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. So that's what this time is about. And we ask, God, that you would orchestrate every, everything, every prayer, every song, mm -hmm. every detail of these meetings. We just want you to be glorified, God. We ask you to whisper in our ear and lead us and guide us that we would know exactly what to say, what to sing. Thank you, God. And I, I want to add that these meetings are just not for Christians. Yeah. Because God loves everybody. That's God right. is a God of, of every single person. And I know that there's many people that do not know God, but God is still speaking to them. That's right. And God is ministering to them as he did to me many, many years ago. So, Father, we pray right now, too, that the angels from the four corners of the world will bring in people yes. that do not know you. Lord, yes. people, we're all people. I don't care who we are. Uh, we're all people, and we all need to be touched. We have the same fears. We've got the same joys. We've got the same uh, uh, blessings. So, Father, I pray that you start to bring in people to, to these meetings in the name of Jesus. Amen. And I wanted Thank to start you. by just saying that the first thing that I felt here as we start now, I felt the Lord wants to touch people's spirits mm -hmm. because God is a spirit and communication with God happens spirit to spirit. Mm -hmm. And Father, in Jesus' name right now, Father, we pray you release your gentle touch on people's spirits, people that are looking at us throughout the whole world, looking at this telecast throughout the whole world. Father, right now I see you touching them and going and blowing a sweet, warm breath. And I believe there are some of you watching that are sensing this gentle breath of the Holy Spirit. Even people that do not know Jesus are feeling this breath of the Holy Spirit, knowing that God wants to touch. God is gentle. God is kind. 
God is wisdom. In this world that we live of harshness and difficulties and instabilities, the Lord wants to come to you as this gentle individual. A, a week ago, God gave me a picture. I just had an image come to my mind and I haven't been able to forget it. Every day it's come back to me and drawn me towards the Lord. And this is, this is God's heart. What I saw was, I saw an, a snowy, snowy day. It was mm. dark, dark, completely dark and snow everywhere. It was so cold, so cold. And then I saw a cabin filled with, uh, it was being lit with a, um, a fireplace. I had, there was a warm, warm fire going on inside. And I saw the Lord, I felt the Lord say, come in, come in, come in and get warm. And that's his call to everyone. Mm. He wants people to come out of the cold and just come into his presence and receive warmth and healing and help. And the Lord is saying, come in, come to me. If you're watching, come to me, says the Lord. Come to me. I also saw, as Mary was speaking, again, the gentle voice of the Holy Spirit coming close to the spirits of people and speaking to them. The Lord is saying, this is the time that I want you to be still. I want you to rest. This is the time that I want you to stop from distractions. Stop from looking at the media. Stop from being concerned about the things of this world. Stop. What people need to do, people need to stop. And God, it says in the in the book of Revelation, I think it's chapter 17, that there was a, a time of silence in heaven that lasted for half an hour. Now, half an hour in the kingdom of God can mean many, many things. But, you know, there's a time of silence. Mm -hmm. And in silence, people are going to find their, their salvation. I found church. I found the Lord by myself in an empty church without a pastor or a priest 42 years ago in a place of silence. It was an empty church that was open during lunch. I found the unknown God who revealed to him as Jesus Christ later on in silence. And I just feel there's a break of silence right now. And in silence, you'll find your strength. The Lord is summoning people throughout the whole world into a psalm assembly, a time of silence. When Moses went into the Holy of Holies, in the Holy of Holies, where the Ark of the Testimony laid, where there was nothing but God's presence, Shekinah glory, resting on the Ark of the Tabernacle. Ark of the Testimony. There was no lights in there. There was no people. The only light was the light from the glory of God. And it was in that place that Moses received directions from the Lord. Because we're living in a time, in a season where the Shekinah glory of God is resting on his Ark of Testimony, which is your spirit. This is a time of silence. And before we enter 2021, God is calling us into this time of silence and stillness. And I just feel that God is beckoning people throughout the whole world to this time of silence. I just had a song on my heart. Honey, just feel free. Feel free. Whatever it comes to, you know, God's just moving here. And just feel free to move by the Spirit of God. Into my heart. Into my heart. Come into my heart. Lord Jesus. Come in today. Come in to stay, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Lord, anybody out there who feels on the outside looking in, who feels so cold and alone, but wants to experience the warmth of that fire, Lord, mm -hmm. it is so easy. All they have to do, 
you are wanting them to come into your warmth, but it, mm. all they have to do is, in, is ask you to come into their heart. Mm -hmm. And Lord, I just ask that you would, would just draw them, just, just draw them into your warmth and, and just that they would ask you into their heart. Thank you. God. Come out of the cold, says the Lord. Come out of the cold. When Mary said about the warmness, I felt the warm Lord. There's many people, not because of winter, but many people are in a cold place. They are isolated. They're without God. Or the difficulties of this season has made their heart cold. Yes. But God is saying, I want to warm you up. As Mary said, come to the warm presence of the Lord. Father, release. We release your warm, your, your warm presence. I see, as I said, release. I see the angels of God taking this warm presence as clothes in their hands. For angels are ministering servants called to those that are going to be heirs of salvation. Now, heirs of salvation are not only people that know Jesus, but people that will know Jesus. They are heirs. And I saw many angels taking those coals and putting them in front of many, many people yes. as, a, as coals that were, that were on fire so that people can warm themselves. These are the coals from the very throne room of God. These are not regular coals from a fireplace. God says, you are cold. You're isolated. You are scared. You're freezing right now. I'm sending my angel, ask my angel to come to you with the coals right now and warm yourself with your hands. Let the warm presence, the warm presence of God's anointing come right now and warm you, says the Lord. I saw the dove of the Holy Spirit also, also uh, falling, a big dove, uh, a, a, a big dove of the Holy Spirit. And you know what? Think about a dove. Think about the dove. When Moses released the, 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 the dove from the flood, the dove found the dove came back to Noah because he found no place to rest. But then afterwards, when the when the land started to try, the dove came back a second time with a piece of grass. And then Noah waited a bit longer and then the dove never came back. When the dove of the Holy Spirit, John the Baptist saw the heavens ran open and the dove of the Holy Spirit come. And where did it go? It rested upon Jesus. Now, a dove is a, is a very gentle animal. If you put your arm out, a dove is going to come to rest. But if, if you start to go just like this, it's going to fly away. Now, the Holy Spirit is a dove. But if your life is agitated and concerned about many, many things and a lot of frustration, a lot of anxiety, a lot of worry, the Holy Spirit cannot rest upon you. But he wants to rest upon you. Again, I see God calling people to go forward, to press in, Press in into a place of stillness. When you're going to be warm, what Mary said, by those coals, you cannot be going like this and leaving. You got to go to, you, you go to the fireplace and you put your hands. It's a place of stillness. When the dove is going to land upon you, God wants to rest upon you, but it's got to be still. The work that God is doing right now is a, it's a work of stillness. Be still. And know that I am God. And if you are a person that that that, is, that does not know Jesus, but you say, well, I believe there's a God, then God is saying, go to your place and be still. And ask the unknown God to reveal himself to you. Amen. And I'd like to um, sing a song that describes God a little bit. Is that okay? Feel free. Your steadfast love extends to the heavens. 
your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Your righteousness is like majestic mountains and your wisdom like the depths of the sea and you come to me filling my heart is your loving kindness i find my peace in the shadow of your streams i eat my fill from the abundance of your household and i drink from the springs of rejoicing you are my king lord i thank you god that you your desire is for everyone to know you in this way that's your desire thank you god god as mary was singing god is healing and wants to heal the hearts that have been broken i see many hearts that have been broken just so not just broken but because they've been pushed and broken down so much they've lost their shape and been, been pushed down these are hearts that have been pushed down by the weight of circumstances have just pushed the hearts down and no doctor is able to take a heart that is pushed down so I'm saying to you, if you are watching right now and you feel that this season, the heaviness, the oppression, the financial problems, the isolation has pressed your heart down and your heart is just so weighed down, so weighed down that it's almost like a concave, it's almost like a, it's almost like a curvature. We want to pray for you right now. I mean, pray for those hearts right now. Lord, I just want to thank you that we don't have to twist your arm. You're, you long, you long to reveal yes. yourself. Your love, you long to reveal your love. You long to express your love to these people who are so longing to be, who are, who, who are hopeless. These people who are hopeless and, and could only dream of having, having some warmth, can only dream of having their prayers answered. But God, you long to be able to, to relieve them. You say, come to me, all those who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's your desire. So Lord, you see these people who are just as Jose described, and I ask you right now to touch them in a way that they would know that, that you, that, mm -hmm. that you would touch them where they are right now in a way that they would experience you relieving them, mm -hmm. you relieving them, yes, you God. filling their hearts, God, fill their hearts, Lord, that you say um, hope deferred makes the heart sick. But we ask for new hope. We ask for you to heal those hearts that have been made sick. And mm. we ask for you to, to interject your hope, your hope into them and, and heal their hearts, God. There's a mother that feels very isolated. She has young children. And in some way, I don't know whether her husband and her are like separated from her, but I feel like she's got three young children and she just feels very isolated i don't know if it's a physical isolation from her family or if it's just an emotional isolation but the lord is the great gatherer and i saw god i see god putting his arms around that whole family or that family that has been isolated that mother that has been isolated from her children that 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 husband that, that is somewhere else or on the outside lord i see you putting your hands and bringing that bringing that family, you know, you are a, as a gentle eagle or, or a bear like with the cubs, just bringing that, that family to your heart. So if that's you, whoever you guys are, it could be you, it could be a similar situation, family situations in which there's been isolation, 
in which there's been separation, in which there's been brokenness. I say to you, the Lord wants to encircle your family and bring your family around himself. Pray, pray. If this is happening to you, a broken family, say, God, surround my family. It might not be instantaneous, but God's a God of solutions. And I just see that he wants to do that right now in the name of Jesus. And I see people are carrying a heavy cart full of rocks, loading. They've been carrying a cart behind their backs with boulders, just carrying, and they are so worn out. And God is saying, if that's you, Christian or non-Christian, I don't care what it is. I'm telling you that there's people that, are, that do not know you, that are worn out. They have to carry a cart with heavy rocks and heavy burdens. God is saying, just lay it down and come to me. If you know me, come to me. If you don't know me, I'm reminded of the first time I met God in my empty dormitory at Vanderbilt University in 1973 after a girl that I had been, that I had been dating tried to commit suicide. And um, my brother, who's now no longer with us, I was in that empty room, 20 some years of age, never prayed in my whole life. Did not come from a, a, any quote unquote religious, Christian, Catholic family, nothing. Never prayed. And I lay there so scared because I've been having panic attacks for weeks after the suicide attempt. I could not go to sleep. I was going to go to the college nurse the next day because I was getting chest pains. And I didn't know anything. Listen, these are for people that have never met God. I was one that did not, had never even prayed at the age of 20 something. And I laid in my empty little room so scared. And my brother came to me and said to me, Why don't you ask Jesus to heal you? You know, so when he left, I looked at the roof, at the ceiling of my little uh, dormitory, and I said, God, whoever you are, I had no idea. I said, come and heal me. Come and heal me. And I saw this invisible hand come down to the ceiling of my bedroom and come into my chest and perform a surgery on my chest. I fell asleep. I had not been able to sleep for weeks. And I, just kind of, I kind of passed out. The next day when I woke up, I was healed. But what happened was, I realized that, that, I realized that, that it was Jesus. But I said, you know what? I don't want to serve. I said, I don't want to follow Jesus. I thought that Jesus was going to, I thought that Jesus was going to take away all my fun. I said, I don't want to follow Jesus. So, I decided after that experience of being healed to go back and do what, what all your people are doing, the, the partying and the drugs and the drinking and, and, and all that stuff. I was, doing all, I was doing all that stuff. But that lifestyle five years later brought me to the bottom of the barrel. But I'm going to tell you, if you are like me, like I was at the age of 20 something, you never met God, just cry out to the unknown God because you need him now. You, man or woman, who has not met God, you need God right now. And God responds to sincerity. Mm, he yes. responds to yes. sincerity. If you're sincere and you want to know the truth, then he will respond to you. Now, God's a very, very sincere God. I had... Uh, several visions here. I had a little picture of a guy or a woman, you know, pulling a rope like this, like, like a string, like doing exercises. I just want to get some of these words of knowledge that come to me. This person, you know, like at a gym going like this, uh, <laughs> those arm exercises that you do, like with this rope or this, mm -hmm. I'm not sure what that means. I just sense that I'm getting the, the feeling that it is repetition. That's a repetitive exercise. And I think that God is saying that there's people 
that have their Christianity, their half their church experience repetitiously in a box. Larry Randolph, one of my favorite prophets. I'm trying to see whether God wants me to go into this or not. Anyways, box thinking. God's Larry, Larry Randolph calls God a linear thinker. He's going from greater to greater to greater to greater to greater. But people are generally box thinkers. And this person was doing repetitious exercise. And I'm saying, God is saying, there are many people that have me in a box. Even in the Ark of the Testimony, the nation of Israel tried to put me in a box. They carried me in a box. We have our relationship with God in a box. God says, I want to get out of your box. Get me out of your box. Let me go. I have new paradigms. I have new plans. I have new strategies. I have new vision for you. And many people do not get out of the box out of fear of the unknown. But you know what? You can be out of the box or you can die in the box. And the adventure of the unknown, though it's a, it's a little bit risky, there is no comparison with the adventure of the unknown with God. When, when did God give the apostles that catch that their fish, that the nets burst? It was when they went, when he said, launch out to the deep. God is saying to you, go to the deep. Don't let 2021 come to you again in the same box that you had him before. Don't have my relationship with you in a box because in 2021, we don't know what's going to happen in 2021. I just felt that way right now. More this repetition, a repetitious lifestyle with God. God does not want that. God is not repetitious. God's exciting. God's adventurous. Thank you, Father. Let's pray. Let's just wait on the Lord. Anything else is coming to you right now? This moment? I just want to say something else here. God is not, we have a whole, we have a wrong concept of God. We have this concept of Jesus Christ as being someone that's always just angry with people. Sometimes we in the body of Christ portray God as an angry God, as a judgmental God. And it was Jack Frost, the apostle of the Father's love, that, that, that said, if your God is an angry God, you are in need of a new God. And I want to tell people out there that God is not this angry, judgmental God. Foremost, God loves people. God loves you. Jack Frost would say, if God had a refrigerator, your picture would be on, the, on his refrigerator. God does not only love people, he likes people. We always say, you know what? God loves you, but do we hear God likes you? And God likes you, and God enjoys having a good time. God is serious. God is awesome. God is big. But when you are all love as what God is, you're also fun. You're also happy. If a person that's, that, 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 that is totally love has to be happy. He can be like a sourpuss. You can't be like a sourpuss and then you say that you're perfect love. And God enjoys. Many times when we have our meetings, we have fun. God makes people laugh. And I want to tell you that we need laughter. We need, you know, God, I want you to know that God is a God, that he enjoys you. He enjoys your company. He sincerely likes you. When you get to heaven, your picture will be on his massive refrigerator. Come to him. He likes you. He wants to be with you. You're so silent. Because <laughs> you were talking. Okay, well. <laughs>
I stopped talking. Okay. I just felt like this. Those are things that, you know, we need to, so know, now, we, wait, we, we need to let people know this. Okay. I want to tell you uh, something about me. Okay. Okay. And that is that for a long time, I did not know how to experience God. Even after I was a Christian, I was a Christian and I would, and I would try and try every day. Something keeps going don't on. Don't worry about that. Face. Don't, that, that, that's, I guess, a coma TV. Just don't worry about okay. that. It's all live TV. Okay. It's all part of live, live TV. I would try every day to experience God and I would end up getting into depression because I felt like I was on the outside looking in, that I didn't know how to to get i saw other people experiencing god and i didn't know how for it to happen to me but you know what now is has become my norm and it's allowed me to have an avenue to experience him whenever i want to and that is that is just proclaiming who he is mm -hmm. because because god it says in the bible that and this is true that god inhabits the praises of his people. Amen. And I find myself when I can just um, uh, sing out, sing out songs that that express who he is. I end up experiencing him. I end up experiencing his love enveloping me. And it's only because I'm I disappeared. I know. <laughs> it's, yeah. Okay. You try to move uh, all okay. that much. Okay. Anyway. It's only because I am just I get lost in remembering who he is. I take my eyes off myself. So I wanted to sing some songs that would proclaim who he is. Can, can, can I ask you something about what you said? Yeah. Well, you said that God inhabits the praises of other people. What about the person that might not understand much about praise, but he said, but he says, I like, I want to sing songs to God. What do you mean by God inhabits the praises of his people? Thankfulness. What, do you mean that what? That, Just that? being grateful. You know, it's like, okay, we can spend our lives complaining mm -hmm. and that will take us farther away from God. Or we can, if we have a glass of water, we can be grateful for that because there's people in the world that don't have water, right? That's right. If we have a roof over our heads, yes, we can be grateful for that. And if we look at what we have and start to be thankful for that, what we have, that creates, do you know that we create with our tongue? We create darkness or we create light, right? Absolutely. And so the thing is, is that that's why I found when I was sitting there just thinking, oh, I don't know how I'm on the outside. I'm on the outside. Yeah, I was on the outside. But then when I forgot about myself and I just started yes. to to ex, um, to just use words to to express who he is, like, for example, we can all be grateful for the world that he created yes he's the creator and he created beauty <clears throat> right and as we look at the look and proclaim what is good then we start <coughs> to that is that <coughs> is when we proclaim <coughs> what is good that is praising him that's praising him even if you don't know <coughs> him, are you okay i hope so <coughs> you, you hope so I got coffee going on the wrong way. Oh, dear. Well, I'm okay in Jesus' name. Go ahead. So even if we don't know any praise songs, and nowadays, if you have a, if you have Google, if you have access to a phone, you can look up any song, whatever. But, but even if we don't have access to any songs, we can say, thank you, God, for, <coughs> for, um, giving me another day to live yes thank you god for this glass of water thank you god that i was able to sleep thank you god, right and thankfulness my god thankfulness i think we're in this country we lack thankfulness you know we 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 become so ungrateful to so many things i remember the one time in new mexico when i was having a really difficult time uh because i was going through through trials and i got angry at god 
And for many months, I would hardly even talk to God because we were going through some very difficult times. The breakthrough came. And my life turned around when I got into my car to go to my midnight shift back at the uh, uh, Channel 11, where I was working at. And I said, you know, God, I'm going to sort of thank you. That night, my life totally changed. And I think sometimes what we lack is a thankful heart. And I think that you should sing a song, give your praise with a thankful heart. I don't know, whatever you want to think. Okay. I just think that thankfulness is something that is lacking in our society. We always find things to be ungrateful or things to complain about. But God gives so many breakthroughs. And I'm even remembering this in my own life now. In breakthroughs that I need, if I just start to thank God, Lord, I thank you for the trial. I thank you, God, for the difficulty. Thank you that you're greater than everything. And start to thank God. You know what? I think that you hit on one of the keys that God wants to do in this season is thankfulness. Sing us a song on thankfulness. Okay. Um, Were you planning to? Or, or, yeah, or, okay. a different one. Any, any song. I kind of forget. Wait, wait. Just <coughs> we sing praises to your name, O Most High. We sing praises to your name, O Holy One, for thou art holy and worthy to receive praises, praises to your name. Um, Why then, worry? Wait, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me mm -hmm. whole. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy loving kindness so rich and free. Depression. There's so much depression. Now, I understand there are reasons there, where people get depressed. I even understand that there's clinical depression. But sometimes, you know, many times depression is a spirit of heaviness. And what does the Bible tell us? God gives us a mantle of praise for a spirit of, of heaviness. How does praise come? Thankfulness. Thankfulness, you know, God can do so many things when we thank him. Right now, if you're going through a difficult situation, thank him. Thank him. Praise him. Spiritual warfare. We are, we, 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 wait, wait, I've got to say something. And we can praise him even in the difficult situation. It says rejoice in the Lord always. 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 And again, I say rejoice because... We can look at it by, Lord, You. we can thank you for this. I thank you for this difficult Quite situation yeah. because you are going to turn it around for good. Thank you, God, that you're going to, to uh, make a way where there seems to be no way and and start to talk like that, right? And I, when you were singing, when you were speaking, I had another song come to my heart. He gave me beauty for ashes the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that I might be a tree of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. What's a song? I it went on my mind that 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 uh that Keith Green would always sing. We we gotta sing that uh that uh song together. Which one? That, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the, in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice. And again I say rejoice. 
rejoice, rejoice. And again I say, again, rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice. And again I say, rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice. And again I say, rejoice. Join us one more time. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. The glory of the Lord is a fire. The glory of the Lord is a consuming fire. And the Lord wants to consume you. Listen, the Lord wants to consume from you all the dross all the bondage, all the pain, you come to him. God's a fire. And the Mount Sinai, it said that the glory of God came upon the mountain as a dark cloud and a fire with lightning bolts and fire. And what does fire do? The fire keeps you warm. The fire guided the children of Israel by nighttime. The fire also consumes and burns and destroys everything that is not of God. And God told me, my glory is a consuming fire. I come to the glory. God is saying, come to, put your hands out, honey. Extend, let's pray. Come to the glory. Come to my glory. Come to Jesus. The key is not politics. The key is not the media. I disappeared. I was raptured. I know. I, 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 got, I, I got raptured. God must be happy with me. Let the glory of the Lord come upon you now. God said, I'm calling people to my warmness. Amen. People are cold. People are shivering. But the Lord is saying, I'm calling you to my warmness. I'm calling you by my side. I'm calling you. My glory, I had this vision. God reminded me of, I'm going to release this. God reminded me of this vision that I had while I was taking a nap before the meeting. I saw the fire of God's glory. Mm. And out of the fire of God's glory, there are many embers. You know how a fire mm -hmm. has embers? And these were embers that were touching people throughout the whole world. Mm. So right now, we're going to release, Father, in the name of Jesus. We release, we release the embers from your fire to touch people, Lord, and set them on fire. Yeah. Seven times. Yeah. Lord, we set forth the embers are from your fire to touch people globally in Dubai, in the Soviet Union, in Australia, in England, in the United States of America. You only did it three times. You said seven. I'm still doing it. Oh. I mean, finished. In the Caribbean, in Europe, in Sweden, you, you blow too, in South America. Oh, you guys blow with me. Let's blow the embers of the God's glory. Again, blow the embers of God's glory. I'm gonna talk now as Elijah was taken up to heaven. As Elijah was taken up to heaven on a chariot of fire and horses of fire, there's a remnant of Elijah's. We are called to live out of the third heavens. Did you know that? Paul had his vision up in up in the uh, up in the third heaven. What when we talk about the word rapture? Well, Paul, that that word rapture that appears. In the book of uh, what's it called, Thessalonians, in the book of Second Corinthians, when Paul was taken up to the third heavens, it's the same word just for rapture. When Elijah was taken up to heaven, he was raptured. You know what? We're supposed to be raptured every single day. Did you know that? And right now there are chariots of fire and horses of fire that want to take people, honey. Like, like I'm looking for something. Oh, oh, sorry, because you were kind of. Well, you, you're also being raptured yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
uh, 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 there are chairs of fire waiting to rapture people that want to be like Elijah and Elisha. There are chariots of fire and horses of fire that are dispatched and ready to take Elijah's up to heaven to live in a place that is raptured, in a place of raptured. The Lord said, I'm calling my church. I'm calling people to be raptured. Not the rapture of the last days, but the rapture that is happening daily right now. As, as uh, Mary was just raptured right now. You know, God, God just took her. Look, she's gone. Oh, she came back. Okay. Are you going to sing a song? I, if I can find Try it. not to move too much. No, if I can find it. Okay. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Let me look at the time here because we want to be honored. We got another, uh, whatever, another uh, 10 minutes left. We want to do these one hour meetings. Thank you, Father. Okay, hold on. Well, we want to thank you. We want to thank you, Father. Oh, yeah, okay, never mind. I sound it. Okay, okay, just a second. Try what, what, what you find? I try to lean back so, so that you're not raptured forevermore. Thank you, Father. Lord, we thank you for what you've done today. Hold on. Thank you, Father. Okay. Good. Try to stay still now. There, go back a little more here. There, there you go. Holy Spirit, rain down, rain down, oh comforter and friend, how we need your touch. Again, Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. rain down, rain down. Let your power fall, let your voice be heard. Come and change our hearts as we stand on your word. Holy Spirit, rain down. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind can know what God has in store. So open up heaven, open it wide over your church and over our lives. Holy Spirit, rain down. Holy Spirit, rain down on this world. Lord, we need you. Oh, comforter and friend. Mm -hmm. You are our comforter. You are our friend. People need a friend. They need to know you as friend. They need to know you as comforter. There's so much misery in this world today. Oh, Lord, I ask for you to break through. Rain down. Break through, Lord. Those sincere hearts that, that are just so wondering, where what's happening? Where are you, God? Help us, Lord. I ask God for you to touch those sincere hearts. I It says no eye has seen, no ear has heard what you have in store. Open up heaven, open it wide. Lord, we're asking you, God, just to rain down as comforter, oh, as God, friend, as healer, your rains, Lord. Pour out your rains. Pour out your rains, God. Thank you. If you're, a, uh, if you're a praying person that, that is here, just let's pray again. Lord, I saw when Mary was praying the golden rains on Father. Let's all come and intercede right now. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we call out to you to pour out your rains. Lord, we need a revival in this earth. Lord, but a revival is a divine act. I'm going to tell you in a moment what a revival is. A revival is nothing that man does. It's a divine act of God that God engineers usually when things are very, very bad because people find God when they are at the end of their ropes. But I saw, Father, we need you to pour out your revival. We need a, let me explain to you as we finish what a revival is. 
my experience with a true revival. In 1997, as we left by faith from Florida to go to New Mexico, we did not even know that we were going to New Mexico. There was a very famous revival called the Brownsville Revival. In Brownsville Assemblies of God Church, 1997, in, in, um, in uh, Pensacola, Florida. Now, what happened was this. A few years before that, on Father's Day, the pastor of the church of Brownsville, this, this was an Assemblies of God. It was a fairly large church, probably a few thousand people. He wanted revival. He wanted revival. And he spent, he would go into his office at four o'clock in the morning. And I want to pray for revival now. He laid in his office or he laid in the, in the sanctuary of, the, uh, of his dark church at four o'clock in the morning, crying out on his face for revival. A revival is an act of God. It's got nothing to do. Now man brings it, man or woman brings it as the uh, Hebrides uh, uh, re revival was actually brought by two old women in their 80s that prayed for that revival to happen. One was blind. But John Kilpatrick would go into his empty church on his floor for, I don't know, months, on his face saying, God, bring a revival. God, bring a revival. On Father's Day, I think about in 1996, they were having a Father's Day celebration and suddenly the Holy Spirit fell on the church and it fell for years, every single day. It had nothing to do, man had brought in, but it was a divine act of God. When we went there for that week in April of, uh, of uh, 1997, let me tell you like, like, like what would happen. This is what we're crying out for right now. Whether it happens exactly like, like this or not, this is what we're crying for, out, out for. We got to Brownsville, we checked in a, we got to Pensacola, we checked in a motel for a week with my family. My, my kids were two, four, six, and eight. At seven o'clock in the morning, people from the whole world, from the nations of the whole world, will start to line up for blocks. From seven o'clock in the morning, seven o'clock at night, waiting for the building to open. I'm talking about every nation will be there. It was blocks of people, you had to stand, on the sidewalk for up for 10 to 12 hours. You know, you, you go out and like someone would save your space. You would buy lunch and I, and I bring it back. When you entered into the sanctuary, when you enter into the, in the sanctuary, the praise and worship would happen. Now as a praise and worship would happen, the glory of, the, 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 the glory of God as a, as a, what do you call those things at the kids parties, piñata? As a piñata, the glory of God would start to fall, would, would, would start to grow every single night. I could see like the glory of God, like a ball, a, like a piñata, would start to grow on the ceiling of the church. And at set moment, the piñata of God's glory would break and fall. And signs and wonders and people would rush to the altars to repent and Healings would happen and manifestations would happen. This happened every day, every, every day, and it happened for years. There was a divine. So I'd like to sing this yeah, once more. Yeah, yeah, we, we are in a moment. We need, Father, let's pray right now because I saw the golden rains of Mary is going to sing this again as we finish up. And we're going to pray. Let's believe together. Let's believe together that God's going to do a revival in this world but that is going to be a divine act of God to start to bring people to him by pouring out the golden rains of his glory upon this earth. Holy Spirit, rain down, rain down. Oh, comforter and friend, how we need your touch again. Holy Spirit, rain down, rain down. Let your power fall, let your voice be heard. Come and change our hearts as we stand on your word. 
Holy Spirit, rain down. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind can know what God has in store. So open up heaven, open it wide over your church and over our lives. Holy Spirit, rain down. One more time. Let's all, let's all together sing in unison this song. Holy Spirit, rain down. Rain down upon this earth. Rain down upon the churches. Rain down upon the people. Go ahead, honey. Holy Spirit, rain down. Rain down. Oh, comforter and friend. How we need your touch again. Holy Spirit, rain down. Rain down. Let your power fall. Let your voice be heard. Come and change our hearts as we stand on your word. Holy Spirit, rain down. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind can know what God has in store. So open up heaven, open it wide over your church and over our lives. Holy Spirit, rain down. Before we stop, God reminded me of something. I'll take a few extra minutes. There is I finish with this from the book of Joel. I want to finish with this verse here. I was not going to do this, but the Lord told me to. Stand by. Yes, Thank you, Father. Let's just keep on praying here. Yes, Lord, you're the only one. And we're so grateful that that's your heart. Thank you, God. Yes, God. Did you find it? Uh, forget it. What can you tell us what it was? It's called the Valley of the the valley of of decision there's many in the valley of decision i was going to talk about the day but i guess maybe i'll talk about that if god brings it back to me tomorrow honey why didn't you pray us out thank you god lord you are the answer and you are the you are amazing god we're just so grateful that you are all powerful you're the creator. You are good. You are love. You are, you have every strategy needed. We thank you, God, that, that you are, um, you are our comforter and you're our friend. And Lord, we're asking God that every single person who tunes in here, will experience you in a new way that we will that we will that jose and i as we seek you that that we will come to you to your warmth god without hesitation lord that's that's what you are offering and that's what we all need thank you god thank you father thank you lord just wait one more second. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. God bless you. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you tomorrow at the same time, 4 p.m. God willing. Pacific, yes, and 7 p.m. Uh, on the East Coast. God bless you.